it is as if I had no option. No choice. Yeah, no choice. Free will definitely was off the table. <laughs> and how, how much of life fits into the recycling of souls and that reincarnation is a machinery of the universe and that if we knew the truth, Souls come into matter to do something specific, leave matter to return, and that this huge, vast cycling, just like the entangled photons, is going on and on, and that if we understood it, and there's this incredible scene in Interstellar where they're trying to deal from the perspective of superstring theory that the the brain, the fifth dimensional brain, is what the fourth, third, uh, second, and first are embedded in. And there is this remarkable scene where they're trying to deal with what the old, wise minds of the ages would have said, the alpha to the omega, the mind that has the presence of the past, the present, and the future simultaneous, that from that perspective, time is an illusion. And where that used to always confuse me, I am beginning to understand it a little better. It is almost as if, and I'm sure, Jimmy, you've had moments like that, that you, all, you feel like life is catching up to where you've already been. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it sounds like I haven't seen Interstellar yet. Uh, we're going to go see it this weekend. Uh, you know, you were just talking about 18 hour days. <laughs> you know, my life. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, we're finally going to get it out of the way. But Interstellar, for all of my friends and family that have seen it, they all seem to be affected uh, the same way. This isn't, uh, this is a movie with, with a message, kind of like 2001. Uh, oh, it, there is nothing comparable to it except. 48 years ago, I believe it was, the debut of 2001, and I uh, was, I think when it came out, I either was just in Stanford or after, I can't quite remember, it was 60-something, because I graduated from Stanford with my master's degree in 68, Right. and uh, I was in New York City, and I remember that for uh, the very first week opening of 2001, and so I was in a New York City big theater, crowded and when the, the credits began to roll on 2001, the entire New York City audience, you know what I mean when I say New York City, they, they've, they've been around and they've seen a lot of movies. Right. They, they jumped screaming, myself included. People were screaming. This was, this was an event. It was a life changing event, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, and I think it's 48 years ago. Now, so between that and I got to see, along with that audience and a few other audiences, the total uncut, I think it was three hours and 20 minutes, it was hugely long, broke every mold then. And so I got to see in that first week that uh, New York screening without any Thing cut. And then there were critics who said it was way too long, and Kubrick went in and cut out, I think, 30, 35 minutes, something. I don't remember the exact time. And so what everybody else has seen of 2001 since that first week or so has always been the cut version. That's right. And now, 2014, what has happened with this interstellar is taking the 2001 event, and I'm telling you, this is to a power of 10 more. And that, and to underscore, I was in a theater, there were seven of us who went that Saturday, <clears throat> that Saturday, <coughs> excuse me, after I had put the Earth files up, seven of us went to see Interstellar in IMAX. And how I'm going to tell you what happened and then ask you if this is, if you've ever experienced this, the music and the last scene come at you really without preparation. 
and the credit began to roll. And it was an IMAX theater here in Albuquerque, and it had maybe, I don't know, 400 and some people in it. I'm right. not really sure, but a lot. It was packed. The credits are rolling. There is not a word, no feet are moving, no one is standing up in all of my life. I have never been in a theater with that many human beings at the end of something that clearly was like a life-changing event that took place in the three hours. It's nearly three hours long, but worth every microsecond. And when you realize that, in contrast, 48 years ago, I had the screaming ovation, people yelling and throwing things in that theater in New York at 2001. And in 2014, the audience was slammed. Stunned. 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 And they did not move. And I mean... Uh, I had a dear uh, my brother grabbed a hold of my arm, and he, you know, we're brother and sister, and all we have to do is look out of each other's eyes. And one of my friends came and grabbed a hold of my arm, and she said, "Oh my God, I feel like I've been hit with a Mack truck." <laughs> and it isn't pain, right? It, when you, when something tumbles in you, like a whole bunch of pieces at once and that you have been exposed to what something in your very soul knows relates to some kind of fundamental truth that we have been exposed to now through this incredible interstellar, but we have not been taught any of it as a human species on the planet. And there is the sad underbelly. It's in the movie. It's in our lives now in this United States of America. The core of the film, what happens when humans trash a planet and they have no other planet to go to. And that at the core of all of it and the resonance and why I think that people are feeling like they've almost been hit with a Mack truck is that there is something in us as an audience that we know that a lot of things are fundamentally off. Right. And how much of this century is going to look like where interstellar begins. Oh, man. You, you built it up pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. it's mind-blowing. I it's know. I've heard it so much. And for people to compare, look... Uh, 2001 stands on its own. We know that. that. That's it. That's it. There's no discussion there. And to put Interstellar, and you said it, we've waited 48 years. We've had 48 years of gap in between. Right. Uh, you know, Hollywood has had many opportunities to do something like Interstellar or like 2001 again. And here we have Interstellar. It's, it's there in front. And for people to even, people that I respect, to compare Interstellar to 2001, you are really, you're pulling at my emotions right there. I mean, that's that's a big mountain to climb, but it seems that that is the vote. It's right there and then some. And and you know I respect you, Linda, and for you to say that, uh, I'm, I'm watching Twitter. That's it. I'm going to go see Interstellar this weekend. <laughs> it's just flicking by. Jimmy, I would be uh, stunned to myself if you, in your program, after you have seen Interstellar, are not using as the benchmark the historic 2001, but this has broken the mold in spades. Really? Yes. Linda, yes. Linda, that's, like I said, you're pulling at my emotions. It's such a high benchmark, but it's what everybody is saying, and I can't, I can't and, wait. There have been uh, some papers just on the sheer black hole side. Mm -hmm. um, Kip Thorne, he is a, a physicist, He a book. I remember getting it, and it's called Black Holes and Time Warps. Yep. And I got that when that book came out 
which must be about 30 years ago. And uh, I struggled trying to read through it. It's not easy to read if you're not a physicist and, and you can do equations. But this is the same Kip Thorne that was the scientific advisor on this film. And even though there are pieces and areas that probably uh, anybody and everybody could quibble about things and interpretations, the most interesting thing is that there have been some scientists have been commenting that this is a film that for the very first time is depicting a possible reality a characteristic about what black holes, small or large, or their interaction with, let's say, our solar system, how it might present itself. And there is a line in the film that if you're listening, you will get it. And then you, when you, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anybody. It's just say that black hole physics is involved in this film, and it is the first time that they've literally tried to take Kip Thorne and others' work on black holes, Hawking and so forth, and depict something in this film that may actually have a reality in what we'll call the three-dimensional universe, matter world that we're in, and that there are so many complex quantum physics and super string theory ideas about other dimensions from 11 down to 5, 5 being like jello in which 4, 3, 2, and 1 are encased. And if people go into the theater with just some kind of glancing education about the other dimensions, super string theory, and black holes then you will begin to see that this film is doing something that no other presentation has ever done. Sounds like Hollywood just stayed out of the way. <laughs> well, they let a real black hole 